Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hop Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is on Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. These common, I guess you could call them internet or anti-two-star bases. Anti-two-star isn't really fair because some of them are somewhat anti-three, but they're also still kind of internet bases. And by that, I mean they're common bases that we've seen before. Not necessarily the best layout, but they can be tricky. They trip people up in Genesis for sure. And I think it's, you know, it's misleading sometimes in the channel when you see these complex attacks um, tailored to certain types of extreme anti-3 bases. But sometimes I think it's helpful to take a look at bases that you see um, more commonly in war possibly and bases that, you know, you really should be able to 3-star even if you're not at the top level um, in like CWL or something like that. So we're going to be taking a look at a few attacks today, both... Um, <clears throat> Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. Town Hall 10, I think especially, um, this video should be helpful because it's not easy to 3-star at Town Hall 10. Um, sometimes on these uh, bases that aren't as, as well laid out even. So taking a look at this first base, um, you can see air defenses kind of in standard locations. Inferno's pretty standard. It looks like a base that um, might have been a okay design maybe six months ago. Hard to say, but um, I want you guys to know that on these bases where uh, you have the four air defenses, you know, in the standard locations, you have the queen, you have the infernos, when it's all there, just take it with a Laloon. Um, you wanna do a Laloon on these bases, don't overcomplicate it, just come in, get the air defenses, get the inferno, get the queen, get the CC, because as you can see, that's all easily accessible, not even close. The skellies, um, you know, there are quite a few of them, but everything goes down, uh, pops the queen's ability, she actually stays up, I think, for most of the attack, and just comes in with the Laloon, and deploy almost like you do at Town Hall 9, and as you do on certain Town Hall 10 bases, just that clockwise or counterclockwise, this one's clockwise, uh, deployment around the base. You can see using the rages, using the hastes. And if those air defenses are in the central um, or semi-standard locations, I guess they're not standard anymore, but what used to be the standard four corners, um, you know, four sections of the base, you'll be surprised how easy it is to three-star, especially if you're used to bases where the air defenses are either um, on like the very edges or all on one side of the base. This, it seems so much easier when you attack a base like this. So you can see he has so many balloons uh, left up and uh, crushes this base, nice job to Team Unique. That one wizard tower should have saved a balloon for it. Um, sorry about that, I'm gonna cut away after this attack anyway so you won't have to deal with notifications um, beyond the next few seconds. So nice attack to Team Unique. We will uh, cut away for another Town Hall 10 and a few Town Hall 9 attacks. So this next one is a similar uh, kind of anti two star base, internet base, whatever you want to call it. Um, once again, don't want to overcomplicate, but this one might be better set up for a witch bowler, especially with the single inferno and the box set up on this base. By the way, sorry if you hear my dog in the background, um, might be able to hear that, not sure. But um, anyway, this is a perfect base to use the witch bowler on because the splash damage all in the middle of the base, so the witches, those skeletons can't really be targeted in splash um, as they go around the outside. The mortars, the wizard towers, everything's in the middle, even the bomb towers, so it works out very nicely in that sense. And uh, the box setup also just makes it easy to funnel on the two corners and send the troops in on the side. And you can see they get in there, does a good job targeting the multi first and then freezing the single. Um, there's different options, you can come at the single and freeze the multi, just make sure you have a few more witches in there to distract the single because you don't want it locking onto your king or anything, but really it doesn't matter um, how you come at the base as long as you deploy things in a semi-correct fashion because um, you can see how easy it is to roll through the space if you execute the attack correctly and uh, N-G-H-I-A definitely does that. I think this is, um, I want to say Devin, I think. Not exactly sure. That's the main account that this is associated with is Devin. But um, yeah, for these anti or whatever you want to call them, for these types of bases that we're focusing on this video, basically your two best bets at Town Hall 10 are going to either be the Witch Bowler or the Laloon. 
and you kind of have to use your judgment. I'd say most of the time, go with La Lune. It's a little bit more reliable. Just come at the side of the base that has the most value in terms of Inferno Towers, Air Defenses, Queen CC. Then come at the rest of the base with a standard La Lune deployment because this one actually gets a little bit close right here uh, with that last Wizard Tower. But um, fortunately, the Witches are strong enough to take it out. So just kind of use your judgment. But this base, I think, was set up pretty nicely for a Witch Bowler, even though things got a little bit um, somewhat close at the end there. So good stuff. Those are the Town Hall 10s. We'll take a look at a few uh, common Town Hall 9 bases, then we'll wrap this up. So these symmetrical bases can be annoying from time to time at Town Hall 9, but basically my recommendation is just Penta. Um, five Lava Hounds, 19, 20 Balloons, and uh, some Rages and some Hastes, and that will get the job done. Um, let's take a look at how you do it um, with this example from Nev. Uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward to the start here. Uh, just drop the balloon and haste it into the base. Typically, the way this is designed, the town hall is in the middle, so the CC is going to be pushed off to one side. And uh, as a result, you can just um, quickly send a balloon in there with the haste, maybe two or three if you need to, especially if you have to get through one layer of defenses to make sure there's nothing that can target your balloons in the CC. Um, in this case, it's a Lava Hound, so not an issue for his air troops. And then once you um, have potentially lured the CC, you drop your heroes, they take out whatever they need to. In this case, there wasn't anything for them to worry about. And uh, you have a, he has a poison if there was like a baby dragon or some wizards or something. And then just send your heroes in. They can you know bite off a very small chunk. But really, the heroes are not the main star of the show here. It's just sending in the five Lava Hounds. Typically, you save one for the back end. So you do uh, four Lava Hounds in the first two air defenses, then send one in on the last uh, one or two, whatever's left up. With the balloons going through, the rages, the hastes. Now be sure if the queen doesn't go down, because she's the main thing that will ruin your attack, the defensive queen, make sure you rage over her. Even if it's not a great spot to rage your balloons, still drop the rage anyway, because um, as long as she's near an air defense, which hopefully she is, and oftentimes she will be because Lava Hounds are the first thing in the base, so she tends to gravitate where they go. Um, when that Lava Hound pops, the Raged Pups will take her out most of the time. If you want to play it safe, you can just use your heroes to take out the Queen if she's far enough outside that you can. But don't invest too much in your kill squad. Just really save up four or five Lava Hounds and, uh, you know, a lot of balloons, about at least 18, I'd say. Uh, maybe a few cleanup troops like he has here. Uh, the Hound actually does pop, but doesn't even matter. Um, he has a few minions to help take out the pups. Awesome attack to Nev. Um, very good stuff. This is how you want to treat uh, many of these kind of symmetrical Town Hall 9 bases that are shaped like this. I will take a look at one more Town Hall 9 attack. All right, and so the last type of base is similar. You know, these are all similar bases, but it's more compact. And you can also just do a La Lune on it. I could see dropping the uh, the Queen and the King up around these barracks up here, getting some solid value and just doing the same attack we just saw, especially because these Expos are both gr uh, grounded. But this is a good alternative um, in some situations if you're not comfortable using a La Lune for whatever reason on the given base. And basically just a few Golems, some bowlers, your heroes. Now you gotta be really careful in these compact bases about hanging your golems out to dry. The funnel has to be really quick. Make sure that your golems don't take too much damage because oftentimes people lose like both their golems before they even enter the base, which is a huge waste. So um, just come in with the kill squad, uh, With definitely bring bowlers. They get such great value on these compact bases because the second bounce almost always lands somewhere. Uh, taking out something. So just come at the base strong with the kill squad. Works best with higher level heroes, but I guess you could say that for any attack. And uh, then send in like a group of hogs. Now you want to bring quite a few hogs typically because they can do some pretty good work on the base. For these compact bases, the best I uh, idea for where to deploy them. Try to avoid spring traps. They're the biggest um, concern because giant bombs tend not to be an issue on the bases that are this compact. And you can see this was kind of annoying the way there were these little gaps in the walls. There actually weren't that many spring traps. The guy put like some small bombs, which was kind of funny because um, he had so many of them. But the spring traps can um, ruin an attack sometimes. So just be careful. Keep an eye out for them. And if you're trying to decide which way to come from, keep in mind where the spring traps most likely are and try to avoid those areas with your hogs. But these are both good strategies. I'd say keep it simple, Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10, as you saw in these four attacks. Town Hall 10, you want to either do the La Lune 
or potentially um, the Witch Bowler. And at Town Hall 9, you want to either do a Penta, you could possibly do a Go Laloon too. Um, the same attacks you see on the three star bases do work, but you usually want to keep it simple if you can. There's no point doing a complex attack on a base like this. So typically you want to use a Penta or a uh, Shattered or Cold Blooded or Stone Toba, whatever it's called. Uh, but use the, the Golems, the Bowlers with the Kill Squad and some Hogs, one to two heal spells. Get them through the base and uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Oh, one more thing. Um, you typically don't have to heal up your bowlers because there's not many giant bombs inside these types of bases. So if you do it right, you can send your, your kill squad in a sense or in a, in a direction where they won't take any giant bomb damage uh, like in this attack and you can use both heals if you have them on your hogs. So that saves you some a spell space for your hogs and that's another benefit of uh, sending in your bowlers at a place where there's likely no giant bombs. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bisectatron out.